everybody, welcome to the Magic Weekly News Update for May 13th, 2018 on The Man Leak. I'm John, as always, and we've got some brawl news, product news, and of course, story time. Up first, a survey was sent out to some Magic players asking them about their opinions on a potential new bundle design, or at least potential new includes for the bundle. Bundles, previously known as Fat Packs, currently come with 10 packs, a spin-down die, and 80 basic lands for an MSRP of $39.99 US. The survey asked how players felt about a bundle that cost $32 and potentially included uh, various configurations of 10 things the new potential things being a pack of 20 foil basic lands eight booster packs which is the original number included uh, as opposed to the current 10 some sleeves 65 i believe was the number which is a little bit weird and uh, a rare with alternate art obviously it's still very early in their exploratory phase of getting the survey out so all none or some of those things could be coming to bundles in the future personally i don't really care about foil basics that much unless they're really really gorgeous lands don't don't get your hopes up you're not just suddenly going to be getting foil basic lands every single set for free uh, um the the alternate art rare would have to be pretty awesome for me to buy the bundle as well honestly the lore booklet would be my biggest draw and even that's been kind of replaced by the art book that we now get each set for the Commander players out there, we got to learn about Commander Anthology Volume 2. The Anthology series bundles together older, usually out-of-print pre-constructed products. We've seen Commander Anthology, Plane Chase Anthology, Dual Decks Anthology, a couple of them, uh, and we get a sequel to the Commander one that came out a few years ago. This set will contain the Devour for Power deck, headed by the Mimeoplasm, built from scratch, Duretti Scrap Savant's deck, uh, Battle, or sorry, Wade into Battle, Kalemni, Disciple of Eros's deck, and Breed Lethality. Good old Atraxa's deck. The legends who front these decks, as well as the alternate commanders, will get the new legend frame treatment with that uh, fun little flourish on the top, as well as foiling. And all the other legends also have the new frame as well. The set releases June 8th. Uh, if you don't have these decks and you love commander, it's a great way to get them, especially since most of the decks are getting pretty hard to find. Finally, Brawl had some changes this week, which it really needed especially online. Baral was ruining Brawl, as he did 1v1 Commander, so he's banned. But that's not all. There, there, there's more. Sorceress Spyglass, a card that I had literally forgotten existed, but it shut down Planeswalker Brawl leaders and hurt the spirit of the format, is also getting banned. Unbanned is the entire standard banned list, because those cards are way less dangerous in a singleton format. Except Smuggler's Copter. That card was still a mistake and is still banned in Standard and Brawl and is a pain in other formats as well. But that's not all the changes. People were clamoring about wanting to play colorless Brawl leaders, but making the land base work was nearly impossible because you couldn't play any of the basic lands because they all have color identities and you can't play cards that have color identities in a colorless Brawl deck. So from now on, if your commander is colorless, so if it's Hope of Girapur or if it's Karn, or Traxos, you can pick one basic land and include as many of them as you want in your deck. You can't mix and match them, so you can't do some planes and some forests and some etc, etc. Not that it terribly matters, because you still cannot play any cards that have color identities with them. Um, they're, they're just going to tap for colorless mana, basically. Finally, the life total for 1v1 Brawl specifically has been dropped down to 20 from 30. The 30 life total was giving people a, a bit too much time to rapidly dig and draw to what they needed, which heavily favors blue decks, which was the big problem, along with Brawl. All in all, these sound like some good changes to hopefully fix the uh, incredibly broken online meta. So with that out of the way, let's move on to story time with episode 9 of Return to Dominaria. Chandra is still hanging out at Karn's crater, wondering how to get Jaya to help her become a, a more powerful pyromancer. Chandra asks her why she was pretending to be some old lady at the keep, to which Jaya replies she went to Regatha a long time ago, she helped some people out, got kind of drunk, apparently did some pretty impressive pyromancy, and left. She came back a couple hundred years later, and they would started a religion based on her pretty... Pretty embarrassing, she says. Chandra pushes Jaya to help her, but Jaya refuses and tells Chandra that she should be with her friends. They're interrupted, however, by more of Multani's trees, but they quickly dispatch them, burning them to a crisp. After that, Karn and Chandra have a chat where Karn reveals that he's digging to find the Silex, the bomb, even though it's totally just a bowl, uh, that Urza used to destroy the Phyrexians as he wants to take it back to New Phyrexia and wipe out the plane entirely. After further pressing Jaya, and Jaya continuing to refuse to help Chandra, 
Karn finally reaches the Silex, triggering a huge surge of trees to attack. Jaya and Chandra fend them off successfully as a pair, eventually burning them all to ashes, but then... Maltani arrives, or rather the semi-unconscious, very, very angry animus of Maltani. Just as Maltani is about to attack Karn, the trees freeze. Time magic, Jaya identifies, and sure enough, right on time, the weather light appears overhead. Chandra's confused, but then spots Gideon aboard, on board the ship. The, the time magic won't hold for long, they say, so they need to get on that ship, but Chandra refuses, saying she needs to fix this. She approaches Multani and reaches out, trying to calm him using what she's learned from her time with Nyssa. Telling Multani he needs to remember who he is and that he doesn't want to hurt anyone, Multani slowly begins moving again and begins regenerating from the terrifying animus to the peaceful avatar with flowers in his hand that we all know and love. Karn assures Multani that he has the Silex and will be taking it away from here and that it won't do any more damage to Yavamaya. Jaya, impressed by Chandra's self-control in dealing with Multani, agrees that she will now help them defeat Bolas and help her become a more powerful uh, pyromancer. The ever-expanding Weatherlight crew boards the ship and flies off to their next stop. On board, Joyra, Karn, and Teferi reunite for the first time since the time spiral days. Joy re reveals to Teferi that she has his spark and she wants him to take it back, which he says he'll think about. The Gatewatch discusses the Black Blade and the fact that it could definitely kill Belzenlock. However, it is a soul drinker, which... Gideon does not terribly want to use. They're interrupted, however, by Jace appearing on board, as we saw at the end of the Rivals of Ixalan story. Jace tells everyone that Bolas is setting a trap for planeswalkers and that he needs to warn Ajani. Jace needs Gideon and Chandra to come with him, explicitly ignoring Liliana, telling them that they can't trust her. She's manipulating them. Gideon refuses, however, telling Jace that they need Liliana and they need to kill Belzenlock in order for her to regain her full power. Jace turns to Chandra and asks her to come with him, to which she refuses. She needs to stay here with Jaya and see this plan through. Jace tells Gideon to not be a fool like he was, and Planes walks away. Further discussion about the Black Blade continues, and Gideon agrees that if they're able to get it, he will use it. Teferi and Joyra discuss their new friends, with Teferi asking Joyra if they know he's fought Nicol Bolas before, but they're unaware of that. Perhaps it's fate, Teferi muses, as he holds out his hand. Joyra drops the pendant, holding his spark into his hand, saying, Welcome back. And that's the end of episode 9 of Return to Dominaria. We've only got three episodes left before this story wraps up. Uh, so uh, we, we do know based on cards kind of what happens, but we'll have to see uh, exactly what goes on and when Nicobola shows up. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the weekly Magic News update. Let me know what you think of those Brawl changes. I haven't played Brawl, so uh, I've only heard the horror stories. Let me know if those are good changes or not. Let me know if you're excited about the Commander product, uh, etc. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or Suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Manda Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash Amanda Leak, twitch.tv slash Amanda Leak, and patreon.com slash Amanda Leak. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button, click subscribe if you want to see more. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.